Here we are on the last Sunday of 2020, and what a year it has been. For many of us, a new year means a fresh start. I'm sure many of us are looking forward to hitting the reset button on this year. However, we might be fooled into thinking that because it's 2021, that somehow all the things that happened in 2020 are gone and forgotten. Maybe today you are entering into this new year feeling lost, alone, scared of what's to come. Or maybe you feel hopeless. There is hope that is found in only one place, Jesus. The hope that we have is because of what Christ has done for us. In Christ, God has promised us renewal, freedom from the hold of sin in our lives, and hope of eternal life. Hear what God's word has for us today as we enter into this new year. Romans 5 verses 1 through 5 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. Let's sing this morning. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. The Christ alone, the cornerstone, we can bear it strong in the Savior's love. 
shall come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness Christ, our hope in life and death, 
Christ our hope in life and death. Hey, Terra Nova, Pastor Tori here. I truly hope you had a wonderful Christmas this year, and we are four days away from New Year, so almost Happy New Year. For today's message, I would like for us to take some opportunity to reflect, to look back on 2020, and to look forward to 2021. If you're someone that likes to journal, or if you're not someone that likes to journal, I encourage you to get a journal out, something to write with, or even your laptop, whatever you use, and and write down some notes that you have from this past year, and and have some goals for 2021. And, and having those goals be geared towards becoming a better follower of Jesus Christ. And if you're currently not a follower of Jesus Christ, I really encourage you to listen to this message and think about this past year and in the ways that God has reached his hand into your life, ways that he's been trying to teach you and to steer him to himself and to show you that the best path is in fact following after him. So for today, I want us to look at a psalm, really just two verses in a psalm, Psalm 31, to help us think about this past year and be prepared for 2021. So if you can turn to Psalm 31, we'll have the verses up for you. I want us to look at verse 5 and verse 15. Here's what it says. Psalm 31, David wrote this. He said in verse 5, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And then verse 15 says, My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. So I want us to think about those two verses in light of this past year and thinking about 2021. Maybe you've had less opportunity this year because of the disruption of our calendars due to COVID because of not having things like the women's retreat and the men's retreat that I know for me have always been a time the last four years of stopping to think and reflect and to get ready for, for the next year. And without that, it has disrupted, um, I know, many of our calendars and has, has not given us the same opportunity to, to think and uh, to look to the Lord as a new year approaches. And so I want this to be a time where you can take to to think, to really between you and God, to to get ready for another year. But first, let's look back at 2020. As we look back at 2020, maybe you're one of the many that throw your hands up and say, good riddance, I'm done with you. I never want to go through a year like that again with the isolation and with the fear and with all the different changes that I did not want to happen. Maybe you're one of the many that really are looking forward to 2021 in hopes that the the virus will be taken care of and the vaccine may work and you're just really hoping that's the case and you want to be done with 2020. Or maybe 2020 was a year for you that you saw God move in ways that were wonderful and that you didn't expect and circumstances in your life came together in ways that you didn't know. Maybe you maybe you have a new job. I know some of you right now that have new jobs that you like better than the ones you had before and that happened because of COVID. Maybe you were able to invest in people, specific people's lives that you weren't able to do before the virus came. And you've seen in different ways how God has worked um, in wonderful ways during 2020. Maybe a big life event happened for you. Maybe you got engaged or something else that you're really grateful for. Uh, Or like most of us, I would assume, like most years, there's both wonderful experiences that happened in, t- in the last year and also some also some troubling ones. But either way, remember verse 15 in Psalm 31. David says, the psalmist David says, King David, my times are in your hand. Our times are in the hands of God. The good, the bad, the ugly. You know, some have said that Psalm 31 15 is the equivalent of the New Testament Romans 8 28 that says, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And we look at Psalm 31 that all our times are in the hands of God, the 
the good, the bad, the ugly, the thrilling, the exciting, the confusing, all of it. And we know, we know that God is working all things for the good, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And so we can trust him that our, our lives, our circumstances are filtered through the loving hands of God. They are for his glory. They are for our good, no matter what it seems while we are experiencing it. What has he taught you this past year? When you look back to 2020, what was he teaching you? What worked in your life in following after the king, in striving to become a faithful follower of Jesus? What are the things that worked? What are the things that didn't work? What do you need to let go of? I encourage you, if you have that journal, something to write with, think of at least two things that really worked and two that did not. And as you look forward to 2021, add on to those things that worked, strengthen those, and have the courage to let go of the things that hindered your walk with the Lord. I'll give you one example from my own life of something that I think did work well and that I want to keep is something called Bible Marathon. So I'm in a Bible Marathon group with some of you in the church. Uh, and in, the, in this group, we start from Genesis and we go through the whole Bible, but we read two chapters a day. And then every other week, we get together, either in person or virtually, and we simply talk about what we read, what we what stuck out to us, what, what was encouraging. And that group has strengthened my walk with the Lord. It's, it's motivated me to stay in the word. It's allowed the word of God to guide us in our, in our own lives. And it's certainly something I want to keep for the years to come. And maybe there's something like that that could be very beneficial in your own life. But it, it's up to you to decide what are the things that helped, what are the things that didn't in our own personal walks of discipleship and following after our King Jesus. So as we look forward to 2021, what do you think of? Well, I know what I want you to be thinking of. It's Psalm 31, verse 15, that says, My times are in your hand. My times are in your hand. Your life, your circumstances are in, are in God's hands. That means all the affairs and the details of your life and mine are in God's hands, past, present, and future, including the year 2021. So, what do you think of when you think of 2021? I want to address two possible thoughts you're having. One concerns thoughts of anxiety when you think of 2021, and the other are thoughts of being tired, worn out when you think about 2021. So first, anxiety. If you're anxious as you think of year, the year 2021, because you don't know what's going to happen, I want to both approve of the fact that we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know for sure, like every other year. But the Lord does. And he tells us we don't have to be anxious for a multitude of reasons. I want to point out one. In Psalm 139, he tells us that he has hemmed us in from, or hedged us in from behind and before and has laid his hand upon us. So before, like our past, our present, and our future, he is in complete control of. That can erase thoughts of anxiety when we remember that. He has given us a bag of days with our names on it, and he knows exactly what's happening, and it is all according to God's plan. Maybe not ours, but his. And we don't have to be anxious about it. We own our time in the same way that your watch owns you. It doesn't. And we don't. We don't own our time. God is in control of those things. He is sovereign over our time. As Charles Spurgeon said, the 19th century uh, preacher in England, known as the Prince of Preachers, he said, there's a moon to control every sea, and there's a master to control the shaping and fate of your soul. He regulates our life clock. Remember, my times, your times, are in his hand. So maybe, maybe you're not anxious, but maybe as you think about 2021, you are tired. The thought of, of doing another lap around the sun just wears you out, even thinking about it. You're, you're worn out. The day-to-day -day has gotten to you, and you're ready for a break. You're ready for the rest that God talks about in his word. The day of rest, and we will enter into his rest. But I'd like to quietly remind us 
humbly remind us that our times are in his hands, not the other way around. We don't get to decide when this chapter is over, when we get to step into eternity, when the new heavens and the new earth are formed, when Jesus comes back and rules on earth as he does in heaven. We pray for it, we ask for it, but we're not in control of when it happens. He is. And so while I absolutely resonate with the idea of wanting that to happen and wanting to be done and wanting to enter into God's rest, our times are in his hands, not the other way around. And for those of us who are approaching older ages um, and are cramming for finals in some ways, I would like to remind, to remind us, to remind you, that our times are in God's hands. And I want you to remember Abraham. I want you to remember Moses. These are two people that God called in the, the older ages that they were. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Moses was 80 and Abraham was 75 when God called them to this, perhaps the most important chapters of their lives in serving God and in ministering to the people of God. And so to not think that we know exactly what the next years are going to hold or if we're somehow done with our, um, our walk with the Lord this side of eternity, we don't, our times are in his, are in his hands and we don't, we don't know what's around the corner. Uh, but he calls each and every one of us to be, to be strong and look to him no matter what happens. Because he's the God that not only controls all of history, but controls every aspect of our lives in particular. And so when you think about 2021, if you have thoughts of anxiety, if you have thoughts of being tired and just wanting to be done, either way, let's put, once again, our circumstances, our time, into the loving hands of God as we move forward into 2021. We read that the psalmist committed his time, his circumstances, into the hands of God. But if you remember in verse 5, he doesn't just commit his circumstances to the Lord, he commits his very self to the Lord. He said, into your hands I commit my spirit. God doesn't just want our plans, our our circumstances, our time, our ideas, not just to commit those things to him, but also our very selves, our very spirits, to commit ourselves to God. And there's no safer place to be. He wants our whole self. And so as we go into 2021, let it be a time that we commit or recommit our lives, ourselves, to the Lord himself, to Jesus. Jesus' last words, some of his last words on the cross, was quoting Psalm 31. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. He gave his all, his life, for our lives. His perfection for our mistakes. His righteousness for our unrighteousness. He gave his all for us, out of love, out of his desire to bring us back to himself. So let's do that. Let's give ourselves to him. Let's confirm our trust and faith in the Lord Jesus as we step into 2021. Our lives are in no safer hands than his. We don't know exactly what 2021 holds, but we know who holds 2021, and we know the heart of our Father, and we trust in him. Let's pray and commit this coming year to Jesus. Would you pray with me? Lord, for, for many of us, 2020 was really difficult, Lord. Um, even, if, even if we didn't get sick, the thought of getting sick for many of us just had so much uh, anxiety attached to it and, and being afraid of getting other people sick and not knowing if we would keep our jobs or, or all these different thoughts that were swirling around our heads, Lord. And some of us had uh, ourselves or family members or, or friends of ours that, that did have uh, difficulty with, with, with getting sick, Lord. And God, you know about all those things. You have gone before us and you've gone behind us and your hand is on each one of our lives, Lord. And we're thankful for that. And we do love you. And we're thankful that we are called uh, by you, Lord God. And as we look to 2021, I pray that your church, Lord, that Terra Nova, that each one of us would be dedicated to becoming better disciples of you, to learn more about you, in whatever way we have to do that, Lord, in prayer and study and in getting together either virtually or in person as much as we can, um, 
following you, Lord Jesus, learning about you, growing in the grace and knowledge of you, Lord, and bringing others to, to faith and helping others, Lord, to be committed to making other disciples um, and showing them how to follow you as well. Lord, we're thankful for the good. We're thankful for the bad uh, because we believe in your promises. God, bless us, we pray, and help us see your face more clearly. And we pray this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lost in sin, held captive by my fear. Till your mercy showed, your hand was reaching me. My God, you came and made a way for me. You made a way for me. I was lost in sin. Lost in sin, held captive by my fear, till your mercy showed. Your hand was reaching me, my God. You came and made a way for me. You made a way for me, my Jesus, gracious Redeemer.
vessels crumble and breath is fleeting upon this rock I will stand upon this rock I will Church. My name is Dennis Gardner. I serve as the operations director at Terranova Church in Troy. 
If you'd like to know more about who we are as a church and what we believe, please go to our website, terranovachurch.org, or you can email us directly at troyquestions at terranovachurch.org. As always, all of our announcements have corresponding links below for more information, and you are always free to email and reach out directly to any of our pastors with questions or prayer requests. The first need to know piece of information is that next Sunday, January 3rd, we will resume our live services at Revolution Hall in Troy. Times and registration processes will be just as they were this past October and November. And we will continue to live stream service and to have them available here on our YouTube page to be watched with us in real time or anytime thereafter. A lot can be said about 2020. We might even have fatigue about hearing about it. But as the people of God, this time of year is when we reflect on what He has done as we've flipped through the past 12 pages of the calendar. I'd love to give a few examples. Our young adults group, as we lovingly call YAG, has continued going strong through 2020. They finished a study in the book of Jonah, and they're halfway through their next book study. They were able to serve in the Koinonia Outreach in Albany, which provides food and resources and school supplies for the needy. They also continued in their annual leaf raking endeavors in the fall throughout the capital region. And they met in smaller distance groups during the recent months and, and also online for virtual get-togethers over the holidays. Terrace Tribes, which are our primary places of discipleship, not only stayed active, but they were anchors for Terra folks in many ways during the isolation of the pandemic. Zoom and other video conferencing softwares, which we might feel weary of, have been tremendous tools to keep us connected and to continue with word and worship and care and community and outreach. Our tribe also served as the foundation as we eased back into in-person services in July and August when our small groups started to band together in groups of four or five tribes and they had hour-long outdoor Sunday services for the first time with live preaching and live worship since March. Those multi-tribe services transitioned us into five full weeks of live services at Riverfront Park in Troy. There we were able to reach out and connect with our city in a way that we had never done or experienced before truly being monastic and missional by proclaiming the gospel of Jesus without walls. Back at Rev Hall, we were forced to reimagine what our services there would look like after Browns had stripped and refurbished the space. We worked with Browns on a collapsible platform and a table set up that suit both of our future needs. Pastor Rob, along with some of our newly installed Terranova deacons and faithful volunteers, devised and built a portable sound system and put it in place, as well as the means to live stream services every week for any of our folks still in varying levels of quarantine. And a huge way in which God has blessed us through this time is by way of the people of God continuing in faithful giving. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. We make our offering call, and when we do so, we often do it with a truth that giving toward the purpose of the mission of the gospel of Christ is worship, and that we should do so joyfully and sacrificially and regularly. And you have largely shown that. You have shown that scary times and unsure circumstances do not negate our call to give from that which God has blessed us with. Thank you, Tara. Thank you for your biblical understanding and your obedience to that. There are links below and here on the screen uh, how to tithe any year-end giving before the end of the calendar year of 2020. Below is a link to a document with step-by-step -step instructions on how to get 2020 giving statements and those instructions will also be sent out in a congregation-wide email around the second week of January. There's much that hasn't been mentioned. Tara helping the Salvation Army by way of bell ringing and Angel Tree, uh, Tara helping to supply energy bars and um, power drinks for the night staff at Albany Med ED. Uh, there was Troy people helping the Boys and Girls Club deliver meals. There was 
a lot that happened this year. And despite the condition of this fallen shadow land of a world where we are, there is so much to praise God for. We have been blessed to continue in our mission and to be used of God and for Him in this past year. Let's end our final service of 2020 with a solid triune benediction to take with us into 2021. It comes from 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.